everyone. It's Terry from the Gypsy Magpie, and I'm here today for the Graphics Fairy Tag Team Friday to share a little winter-themed shaker tag with you. Um, I made a little tiny shaker packet with some, oh, they're so cute. They're little sequined snowflakes and some little flat-backed rhinestones that I'm thinking are like little snowballs. Um, the reason I wanted to do something winter themed is I was at my local scrapbook store and they showed me this stuff called fluffy stuff and it's so much fun to play with. It reminds me of the old puffy paint from like the 1980s if you're old enough to remember that. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of snow accent on some of these uh, details on here. Um, I started with just um, a plain tag base covered in sheet music. I added this frame, um, which came out of one of the um, one of the the antique floral album bundles. Um, I used a slide mount with a little bit of embellishing on that, and it was pretty simple to put together. So let's get started. The base of your tag is just made with. I used some real thin chipboard and some sheet music. I have a lot of vintage sheet music. If you don't have any, don't worry about it. Um, Graphics Fairy has quite a few different pieces of sheet music throughout all of the bundles. But for this tag, I worked primarily out of the bundle called Blue Jay's Winter. And she's got a really lovely piece of sheet music in that bundle. So you can always print that out and use it. So I just cut it out into the shape of a tag. Uh, I did make sure that I'm three and a half inches wide because that is the width that I printed this frame, this album frame. So I know I, I knew I needed to be that wide. So what I did was I actually printed my frame first, made sure I measured everything, and then I went ahead and cut my tag. Um, I distress inked just slightly around the edges, it's very, very, very light. And I took, I love these needlepoint Sharpies. They're waterproof, they're permanent, and I just did a little bit of line work. So, super simple. Once I did that, I went ahead and I printed as the, the bottom of the shaker tag. I printed out an image from the again the blue jays winter um it is a pdf that's a journal page and kind of ignore the color on this uh my my toner cartridges were low so i printed it out and the color was terrible so i replaced my cartridges i printed this pdf at 50 percent um because i wanted it to be able to fit onto this tag so i printed it at 50 percent i printed two of these and if you see, I made a little dashed line. I'm actually going to cut that right in half, and that's how I'm going to use it. So let me show you what you end up with. This is one side of that. She is going to be the bottom of the shaker tag. So she'll be the bottom. I'm not going to glue it on yet, though. What I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to work on this frame, because the frame is the important part to make it a shaker. So I went ahead and I printed uh, the, I believe it's called the Pine Arch frame. And it's, again, it's out of the Antique Album Pages bundle. I fussy cut the center out, so I ended up with this. I went ahead and again, with my distressing, just barely, barely did the edges. Now you have to make something that's going to hold, you have to add something to keep the fill from falling out. So you can use different things. You can use a transparency sheet. You can use a sheet of acetate. And acetate you can find at a lot of the, the hobby stores. Um, the transparency sheets, if you're a teacher, you probably have some. Um, you can buy them at the office supply stores. Or if you don't have either of those things and it's the middle of the night and you're in your pajamas and you want to keep crafting, grab a package from one of your little embellishments. And this is just a cellophane bag. That will work fine. I would cut it to size. I would glue it to the back. And that would keep your fill inside. 
what you're going to end up with is something that looks like this. You can see the sheen, so the acetate's on there. I have gone ahead and I have, out of my second copy, I fussy cut the little girl and I glued her on so she is just touching all four places. That's enough to hold her on. There's no chance she's going to pop off. So she is the top. Now what we have to do is we have to create a little bit of space to allow the fill to slide around. So I did it with just some foam tape. Just the regular old, nothing fancy foam tape. And it looks like I've got a lot, but I wanted to make sure that every single edge was sealed. And I'm gonna peel this off. You wanna make sure everything is sealed because if you don't, your fill will fall out. And that's not what you want to happen. So, let me, this is always the most difficult part is to get all of these peeled off. And I'm sure this is exciting watching. But once you have this, it, this little buffer of foam, it creates just enough space for the sequins to slide around. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, before I stick it down, I need to put the fill in. So what I'm gonna do, I am just going to sprinkle some on and I'm gonna kind of corral it into the center. And I'm not gonna use the whole pack. This whole pack was enough to do about four shaker cards. So I'm kind of spreading it out because what I wanna do and this doesn't have to lay on there. What I want to do is I want to center this image right over the image of the girl underneath. So I have to make it, I have to just adjust it enough so I can actually see her. And then I'm going to stick it down. Oops, I stuck it to my work table. And you can hear it. I don't know if you can see it, but... You can kind of tap it and everything will shake down to the bottom. But it's just, it's cute, it's sparkly, and I loved it. So I've got enough adhesive on here. It's going to go ahead and stick to my tag. You could use a little bit of glue if you were worried about it. Um, one thing I did want to do was I wanted to glue a little bit of pom-pom trim down. And I'm going to glue that onto the back before I stick this down. So I am just going to run a little bit of glue, whatever, whatever you have will work fine to hold this trim down. Um, I know a lot of people use fabric tack. I normally use the Beacon 3-in-1 liquid. I use that for everything. This just happens to be a uh, fine tipped adhesive. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue those pom-poms down. The embellishing is really pretty simple on this. There was enough excitement with the stuff in the shaker box. So that, it really truly does need to dry just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and keep working. I'm gonna stick this down to my tag base. And there you go, we've got the basis, the, the base of the tag done. So it was that easy. I'm gonna go ahead and glue on a little piece of velvet. And again, I would normally like to use my three-in-one, but this will do. And that's it. Okay, what we're gonna do next is I did a little bit of embellishing with stickles. It's just a glitter glue. Stickles is the, the name. It's made by Ranger. But there are a lot of companies. You can find these in the dollar bins at the craft stores. And it's just a glitter glue that's got a little bit of sparkle to it. And it's subtle. Let's see if I can get that shimmer. There you go. It's really subtle. And it doesn't look like much. When you first put it on, it's kind of dull. Um, once it dries, and it will dry very quickly because you need to work very lightly. It'll dry really quickly. And the milkiness of the adhesive uh, disappears and all you're left with is some sparkle that, I mean, it's on there, you can't scratch it off. 
you don't have to do that step, but it really does add like an antique -y look to it. So I went ahead and I did all of the little pine sprigs and the pine cones. I'm not going to do that on the sample. I can always go back and add that later. What I want to put on here now is this little um, slide mount. And so I bought some on, e um, on Etsy. A bunch of slide mounts. I got a huge pack of them for, I don't know, five bucks. And I went ahead and cut it in half because you only need one side. I covered it in sheet music and again just did a little bit of line work around the edges. There's no right or wrong way to do this, so don't worry. Um, I am going to use as the embellishment the other half of that journal page, that tiny little 50% size printout. And I fussy cut out the ticket and I fussy cut out this label. I went ahead and I just put a little typewritten quote on there. Let's see if I can get that to focus. What it says is, the snow is sparkling like a million suns, a million little suns. I glued it on underneath. So let me do that here. And it just barely fit this opening, um, but it, I liked it. I just, I thought it added something. So let me stick that on here. Okay, we've got that on there. Um, I'm gonna stick this on. And of course, when you're, when normally when I'm working, I go a little bit slower, but it's hard to do this fast enough for you guys. Um, I went ahead and for this really pretty snowy bundle of pine cones and pine boughs, I cut it out of this PDF, which is also in the Blue Jays Winter. Um, there was another little tag, um, la a label I should call it, with the exact same shape, but it had the pine boughs on it. And so I fussy cut those out. And what I did was, I'm gonna go ahead and glue it on, and then we're gonna play with that snow. And the snow is so much fun. Now I wanna just snow up everything. I live in California where we, we live in an area that has no snow, so to me, snow seems very, very exciting. I'm sure if you live in snow, you probably get tired of it. My mom lives in Idaho, and there are times she gets tired of dealing with the snow. This stuff, you just kind of, I should do this where you can see it. I am just kind of dabbing it on, and yeah, it's white and kind of gooey looking. Let's see if that'll focus. But what I'm going to do, this is going to be noisy. I've got my good old heat gun, and I am going to heat this and it will puff up. Let's see if I can do this where you can see. And as it heats up, the texture changes and it turns into almost like a foam. Okay, there it goes. So it just, it kind of turned it into, let's see if I can get that over here. Now it's dimensional, where before it was flat. And it was just fun. It just kind of looked like snow. So I'm going to go ahead and I would normally use something else as a, to add dimension. But I'm going to go ahead and just use one of these little laser cut snowflakes. Because that's about the right dimension. And I'm going to just kind of put it on here off to the side. Again, there's no right or wrong place to put these. Play around with the arrangements when you're making something. So that it's exactly what you're looking for. Um, there's a little bit. We've got a little bit of snow and pine bough up at the top. To get that, I took one of her images. And I printed it as a contact sheet. So you end up with, it's about an inch and a half square image. And I printed it exactly the way she had it. And then I also reversed it 180 degrees. And so I've got these little pine boughs going both ways. And what I did was I fussy cut them out, gave them a little bit of, a little bit of distress ink, 
because they were very, very white. And I am just gonna glue those onto the top of this tag. Stick those down really quick. And the main reason I did that was the top of the tag just looked a little bit too plain. Now I went ahead on mine and I did some more of the snow accent up on the top. You don't have to do that on yours or you can do it. You can do that at a later point. But that's basically how I put this together. The one other thing that I really did love were these little tiny metal ice skates. Um, these are one of the Tim Holtz embellishments and you get, I think you get like eight of them in a package for a few bucks and they're darling. There is a tiny, tiny little hole at the top. And what I did was I just ran a piece of Baker's twine through and tied a little knot and put a dot of glue on it so it wouldn't come undone. And I attached that Baker's twine to the back of this laser cut snowflake. I glued the snowflake on. And really, that's it. I had some uh, some of the jute twine in kind of a natural and a dark olivey green. And I just, I cut maybe four or five lengths of each one. And I gathered it all together and tied the bow. And that's it. Um, I think I'm actually going to probably use this as an ornament on my tree next year. It's a little large, but on some of the trees that have a lot of spacing between the branches, it'll be fine. And it's really, really lightweight. So I might just go ahead and put the date on it that it was made and hang that next year on my tree. But I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, it with the acetate, it's really hard to, to get the camera to focus. But oh my gosh, in person, this is so sparkly and so pretty. So anyway, thank you for coming along the ride today, and I hope you join us next Friday for another Tag Team Friday. Bye-bye.